Hello and welcome to Gaming Like It's 1979. Today we're going to be doing a let's play of a specific part of Last Call BBS. Now Last Call BBS is Zachtronics's last game in the sense of being their most recent game but also their swan song the company is shutting down after this it's an amazing game uh the premise here is that your i believe he's your uncle relative has given you this very old computer where you're going to be connecting to an old bbs and downloading all of these games um I'm not going to focus on all of the games. There are plenty of Let's Plays on YouTube and, and you'll be able to find those. I wanted to zero in on one game in particular, which is this Chip Wizard Professional. Now, you know, as well as I do, that much of my channel is devoted to um, circuitry and Boolean logic and l computer design and architecture. Well, that's what this game is. This game, Chip Wizard Professional, or this program, is basically a re-implementation of Zaktronics's one of their earliest games, which is a flash game called Constructor, Engineer of the People. Fantastic game, punishingly difficult, did not explain how to do anything. Uh, so we are going to do that here. You can see I've already done some of these levels. I'm going to walk through them from start. They give you a chance to make multiple design revisions, and so I'll use that feature to actually um, to actually make these levels for you. So I have left on the screen warping mode, and I gotta say, I think it's a little distracting. So before we get started, I'm going to, we're gonna minimize this in our little OS, and I am gonna turn that off. Screen effect disabled there, that's much better, okay. So what is Constructor? Constructor is about um, connecting inputs to outputs and having a, a test signal match. So right now we have absolutely nothing connected. If I click play on the simulator, you can step through one at a time or we can play the whole thing at once. And what we can see is this is the graph down here for my inputs. We have signals going high and low and here's the graph for the outputs. And we could see in the graph of the outputs are all completely low all the time, which makes sense because we haven't hooked anything up. Up here in the upper right is our visualizer, which is going to show what, it's just, uh, it's entirely decorative. It's, it's what your various um, silicon and metal parts are going to look like. But my face is kind of blocking it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make myself even smaller. I'll be little tiny Pete up here in the corner uh, commenting on what we're doing. All right, so let's reset here. What do we need to do? Well, our specification is down here. And this says connect in A to out A and in B to out B. All right, and they give us a hint. We'll read that later. So in A is up here and out A is down here. And we have a number of options here. We have metal, we have vias, which uh, they haven't explained yet. And then we have N-type type silicon. So let's go ahead and connect in A to out A. We'll just go right down the middle. And let's connect in B to out B. Okay, well, now we've wired these things together, right? So what's gonna happen when we try and run this? We could see it doesn't work out. What's happening is the signals are crossing uh, each other in the metal. So obviously that's not gonna work. Now we can look at this hint, which says to use N-type silicon, which sits below the metal layer to pass one signal under another. All right, well, let's go ahead and remove our out B signals. And what we'll do is, so first of all, if we choose the silicon, we note that we cannot actually reach the source pad. So how does that work? Well, if you go up here, there's actually a manual. And the manual tells us a little bit about all of these various elements. And the one I wanna call your attention to here is vias, small vertical wires that connect the silicon layer to the metal layer. So that is how we can use the silicon to cross the metal. So we're gonna draw our metal um, 
path just like before, but this time we're going to leave a gap. And now we're going to draw our silicon. And this still won't work at this point. Let's go and prove. We could see that out B is not getting the signal, but if we use a via, we're basically punching a hole between those two layers and connecting them. And now if we hit play, this is the first level of the game. So let us go on to the next level. So now we're being asked to make an AND gate. So we have two inputs in A and in B, and we have an output out X. And we've made AND gates in many exercises in many gamified circuitry programs. So I'm sure this isn't gonna be that hard, but this game actually has a slightly different take on it. In particular, in Chip Wizard Professional and Constructor, you create these gates by drawing them in silicon. And again, we're going to refer to the manual, and the thing we want to look at is the using transistors. And what we can see is that there are two types of transistors, NPN and PNP, in the game, created by layering the two types of silicon in different ways. And the short form, if you want to remember it, is that NPN, or the blue, red, blue, is uh, an AND gate, and PNP is a NOT gate. Pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw an NPN transistor. We're going to do it, let's do it right up here. There are efficiency concerns. Um, you do get kind of rated and compared to all your friends based on how much silicon and metal you used and how much space you use. You know what, let's actually even do this a little, I, I don't wanna get, you know me, I, I hate getting all, you can erase by right clicking by the way, I hate getting all uh, too worried about efficiency, but let's try and do something relatively compact. And we will go this way and this over here, and this over here. And that looks pretty minimal. We'll punch our vias. Hopefully this will work. Let's try it out. And it works great. We have our visualization over here. You could see things light up when they are powered. And you'll note that these plus V blocks are always powered. And that shows you that I actually connected this to the completely wrong place, which is why we haven't won the level. I assume this was out. Uh, but I was not paying attention, so we'll go ahead. A little less efficient now. Great, and you can see down here, we actually have a leaderboard. You might recognize some of those names. It's the same group of people who tend to play a lot of these games. All right, let's go on to the next level. Next, we're going to create an OR gate. Out X should be high when either IN or I N A or INB is high. And they've given us a hint here. You will need to create a transistor for each input so that the signals do not interfere. Right, this is actually a difference from um, Constructor. What I remember in Constructor is you really could cheat a lot of the levels by just wiring together anything you wanted ORed. And it would, it would generally work. You sometimes had to put some silicon to block it, but they're being a little more disciplined about it in this game. So let's see. We want, what we're gonna do here is we're going to use the fact that these V um, plus V heads are always high. And we're going to create two transistors like so. And they're going to be AND gates. And what we're going to do is we're going to use... We're going to use our INS to control the gates. But the gates themselves are always going to be kind of powered by the voltage block. Um, there was one other thing I remember in Constructor is that I have a vague memory that the game kind of assigned scores based on materials and silicon was a little more expensive than um, metal. I do not think that this game is doing that. So 
I'm going to treat them as the same for now. All right, and let's punch some vias. Nice keyboard shortcuts in this game. And let's see if we did it. We did not do it. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I missed a via. I literally forgot. I missed two vias. I forgot to punch those. Let's try it again. There we go. I love this 3D visualization. There's no benefit to it. I don't know. I don't. It doesn't feel. I don't feel like it helps me solve the levels, but I just love the way it looks. So what am I doing here? Well, you can see that I did not get. I don't. I was not as efficient as possible. What could I do to make this more efficient? What would happen if I moved one of these transistors up? That might save it. Let's try it. I'm not going to get stuck on efficiency, but in this early level, it feels like a reasonable investment to try to just try it out. All right. Do that and do that. Yeah, this might work because I bet that this is not good. So the question is, do I need contiguous blocks of free space or is it just literally counting the number of squares? And I'm making a bet that it's counting the number of squares that have nothing in it. No, I'm still, uh, still a little bit short. Is there anything else I can do here? Or should I just, should I just give up? Well, just in case, one last thing I'm going to try, and then I'm going to stop obsessing about this. Just in case the contiguousness matters, let's do that. Actually, we can just count, can't we? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how it's getting that number. All right, well... I'm going to leave it here. I, I, I would love to see this 10 block solution, so maybe I'll ask them later what that looks like. Let's go on to the next level. A not gate. Out should be high when in is low, and vice versa. Well, this is ex almost exactly the same as what we were doing before. We are going to be drawing a PNP gate, though, instead of an NPN gate. So the interesting thing about this is that in order for the NOT gate to be powered when the input is low, the implication there is that the signal has to be carried over the red silicon. So we're once again only using our input on the gate and our voltage is what's actually going to be carried. All right, let's try it. Looks beautiful. And we have a minimal solution. That's kind of nice. So I think the only point of this level is to introduce you to the not gate. Power on reset. This is, I think, the first level that is probably going to cause some people a little bit of trouble. It introduces a new concept, which is capacitors. And they tell us that in a hint. You will need to place capacitors below the metal layer to create a multi-cycle delay. So what's the spec here? Reset should be high for the first 10 cycles after power becomes available on the V-pins. And if we run the simulator, see power becomes available. Reset wants to be high. It is currently low because we have no wires, right? And it's 10 cycles. In fact, we can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the 11th cycle, it is low again. All right, so from my perspective, clearly a NOT gate is going to be required for the solution here um, because the NOT gate is what we're going to use to turn off this circuit, right? We'll wire up that. All right, and in fact, that should still be the same because as long as there's no power there, that will still be okay. So there's our high, and of course, we're never turning it off, so it's gonna be wrong for the rest of this. So we need to turn this off 
after 10 seconds. Well, we have no inputs here. We just have other Vs, right? So let's see what happens. Let's just do that. And let's take a capacitor. We'll take one capacitor and put it underneath there. And let's watch this go by uh, ticking. One tick, and you can see the power kind of stops here at the capacitor for one tick. Two. And there we go. That's one second, and we could see it did the right thing, but at the wrong time. Well, this is pretty simple, the first 10 cycles. So we just need to make a path that is 10 cycles long and put 10 or nine capacitors underneath it. Let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Is that right? Let's give it a go. Uh, capacitors. I'm curious if we're going to have an off by one error here. That was perfect. Can I make this a little? I don't think so. So once again, I'm coming in less efficient than my uh, than my buddies here. I wonder what's going on. I wonder how they're doing that. I wonder if there's some sort of loop one could be doing or some way to use a capacitor twice. I don't know. I want to see their solution. If you know how they got to 15 instead of 20, leave a comment below. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. Digital signal mixer. Out of X should be high when any input is high. So from a circuit perspective, this is a four-way OR. And here we get into what I think of as the Zektronics BS. Um, but they're, they're doing something challenging, right? They're taking this very dry topic and they're trying to gamify it. And one of their go-to moves for gamifying things has always been giving you very constrained um, space to operate in. So a four-way OR would be trivial. If you had infinite space, you just chain together OR gates. But because of how this um, system works, we only have a, looks like a six by five grid uh, in which to operate, and we can't actually chain together three OR gates in an obvious way here. So what I'm going to do, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, is I am going to draw, if you look at the positioning of these pads, one, two, three, four, and then our out is down here. They're kind, It's almost maximally inconvenient to try and make this work. So I'm going to draw a crazy knot gate in this case. And one thing that is, again, a constraint is you cannot cross, you can't make a transistor on a corner this way. So that's a constraint. And so we're going to do this, and then we're gonna wire our inputs to each of these, and we're gonna do a similar thing here. And so we have not made a four-way OR gate. What we've made is a four-way NOT gate. Okay. So this is coming out of here. Oh, we need to put power into here, don't we? Uh, that's going to go here. There's only one power pad here, so it has to come from this direction. So this is our input. And at this point here, what we've got is the exact opposite of what we want, right? It's, it's literally the inverse signal. And in fact, let's wire it up to out and see if, if I'm right. If I'm correct, this should be a complete inverse. Why is that not working? Oh, because once again, did I miss a via here? I did. I'm absolutely missing a via right there. Yes. Okay. So let's take a look. Yeah. And this signal is exactly the opposite of what we want. Well, that's actually great because if it's literally the opposite of what we want, the implication there is that we can invert it with a NOT gate. And so let's do that right here. Mm, yeah, right there feels good. That there, that there, punch some vias. Don't forget that. And now when we run this, that should be a four-way OR. So it's we made a four-way OR using only a four-way NOT gate and a two-way NOT gate. Looks great. 
interrupt controller. We have three inputs, IRQs 1, 2, and 3. We have three outputs, 1, 2, and 3. Each output should be high when its corresponding input is high. If a lower number input is high, it should block the higher number outputs from activating. All right. Well, so let's see. Lower number, meaning 1, right? Let's see if that's right. Okay, great. So our out one is now perfectly correct. So if we try and do the same thing with out two, it will not work because when out one is high, it's supposed to block this from going low. So when out one is high, out two should not be high. And we just use the word not, which is, I think, a pretty good hint that we're going to need a not gate. So let's go ahead and break this here and put down a not gate, literally right there. Mm -hmm. And one, two, three. And this is my method, right? I, I definitely break these things down into smaller pieces so that I can understand them. And then if I, if I don't, then hopefully I haven't gone too far down the rabbit hole. And now our out one and our out two are correct. If we pull out three across, that should fail in a different way. And it is failing. So we need out two to be, or excuse me, out three to be blocked. If either out one or out two are high, and this is where it gets tricky, it's the inputs. That are high. In other words, well, is it though? Does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter because if out two is high and out one is low, then the output here for out two will be high. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter. I think either way, um, it would be the same if I pulled it from here or if I pulled it from here. So the challenge here, we need obviously a two input not gate, right? Like so. And this one we can just pull right over. Oh, in fact, maybe this is easier than I thought. We could literally just do that, right? Because the silicon passes underneath the metal, so it's fine. Will that work? Let's see if that works. Connect that up. Ah, it works great. Well, I'm, I still have a very inefficient solution. So I'm giving you all a lot of opportunity to prove yourself smarter than me, and I encourage you to do so. Um, is there anything else one could do that would make this more efficient? The only thing I could think of I think it would be, I'm going to try this just, I'm still trying to understand the efficiency concerns here and I don't have them. I don't have them in my head. So let's just try this out of curiosity, not because I care about the score. I don't care, mom. All right, let's just move this up one, one level, one level, one row, All right? And We'll route this, should be the same either way, right? And we need that to go there and that to go there. That's the same. And that, see, I think that should be mathematically the same. I don't see any reason why that would be different. Oh. That did improve the efficiency. That surprises me. Um, I guess I must have recovered a square somehow. And just to be bloody minded, I want to do one more thing. And then I'm going to call this video and cut it here because this is the entire first set of problems where afterwards you get a little plot from the game. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Well, no. I'm going to delete that. Just to satisfy myself, I'm pretty sure that metal versus silicon doesn't matter. It's just space that matters. Let's take a look. 
Okay, well, we've learned something new. I'm wrong. Uh, apparently, metal is cheaper than silicon when it comes to the design size. That surprises me because why does that matter? Maybe this is a three-dimensional thing where I'm not seeing it. But the implication there is that you don't want to pull long runs of silicon wherever possible. Um, so that suggests, damn it, I want to stop. I want to cut the video here, but I, I got to know. Now, there's no way to avoid this because that silicon needs to needs to go there. So I think this is as minimal as this shape is going to allow us to be. Well, we'll try one more thing. If I were to pull that there. No, we're not. We're going to. I'm going to stop myself because there is no natural stopping place for this if I don't. This is entirely, this is the entire first level. I'm going to click open design browser here. And we've now done all of these levels in Chip Wizard Professional as part of Last Call BBS. Um, if you needed help solving these levels, I'm glad to be able to help you out. Um, it's a certain way of thinking. And it's, it's not at all surprising um, that the game can keep you going and, and can, can, you could easily get yourself confused in this game. So please don't feel bad about it. Uh, I will do, I have not yet finished the second group of levels. I will probably do that before cutting the next video. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get this out there because I know a lot of people are playing and I, I figured you might want to see it. So this has been Gaming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.